Today, we're at Precision Gears here in Wisconsin, and they have a story from Heimbuch that you are going to love. Yes, it has the cliches of flexibility and rigidity and precision, but it's reducing overall tasks, getting it all in one machine, and offering capabilities that have never been done here before. This company started in 1919, so to say something like that, that means something. We're here in thousands and thousands of square feet that continues to grow one of their many locations locations and maybe also important is the fact that they have help wanted signs. They continue to thrive in this industry and they need you. So let's step inside where Dalton is waiting for us and learn more about this fascinating story here at Heimbuch. First of all, Dalton, thank you so much for allowing us to come inside since 1919 to open the doors to cameras and let us share a little bit of your story with our global audience out there. Thank you. Thank you. That's the gratitude from us. <laughs> it's a pleasure to have you. All right, my here. friend. So let's get into what we want to discuss today. The audience always loves when they can figure out how to do better in their shop. And it's something you've done here. And it's been a real change learning from you. But let's start with those pain points, my friend. When we're talking gears, I look at the gear world myself because as a machinist, I never got to spend much time in gears, but I appreciate it. It's artwork to me. It takes time and dedication to understand how that precision can be done, but it also comes with a lot of pain points, doesn't it? <laughs> it, it certainly does, especially in today's day and age. Um, obviously, you know, it, personnel is a really, really big issue. Um, so one of the things we wanted to do was take a step into automation, and that's what we did here. Um, and so our first step was, you know, one of our, one of our bottlenecks was, was our hobbing department. Um, so we needed a new hobbing machine. We wanted to put automation on it, fill that personnel gap. Um, and that was really the first stepping stone as to getting this whole package together. When I hear about hobbing, I already know the difficulties that happen. The fact that you've decided to automate it and some of the details <laughs> that go into that. The first thing I think about when you automate something in hobbing and knowing, Dalton, that you have thousands of SKUs, how are you able to automate? So what we had to do was find some form of work holding that was more of a universal quick change system something that you know we could we could change in a matter of five minutes get the new parts up and running um this robot you know this this does the changeover very quick um simple user inter interface and then uh you know we kind of tied all that together and and that's how we landed where we are today Heimbook is kind of known, we do a lot of these interviews because every customer has a different success but a similar success at the same time. And during these stories and these customer testimonials, we hear from them and Heimbook says the same. We know that they're known for added rigidity and quick change and flexibility and all of these, these adjectives that we utilize maybe far too often at this point, but they're the buzzwords. I believe that you have also found these successes through Heimbook with added precision with the yes. ability to change things out quickly if you need to for all the different SKUs. Would you mind describing some of that? So one of the things we came to realize is, is with this system, we're actually able to achieve higher quality gears hobbing than we were previously with any of our other older CNC hobbing machines or even, uh, you know, shaving, right? It's an old time process, you know, I mean, there, we have an old shaver here still. Um, it's hard to find somebody who knows how to run those, but, uh, you know, we're actually able to hit, I think we have a couple charts where we were hitting like uh, Q, Q11, Q12 gears coming right off of a hobbing machine. Um, and the only way that we could achieve that was to have, you know, a, a really stable ID colliding solution so that, you know, the parts are running true. Um, you know, we have a, a, a really nice hobbing machine and, you know, with the hob technology nowadays, we're able to tie all that together. Um, they work cohesively with each other and, and we're able to achieve, I mean, like I said, we, we have the charts to prove it, so. Precision Gears has been around since 1919. You've been doing this for over 11 years. You just mentioned some aspects that I think are worth reiterating because, and I've seen your help wanted signs out there. We've, yeah. we've, we've talked, and the whole world, the whole industry for sure is going through that same pain as well. But you mentioned something to me, Dalton, I will have to say it again, is it's hard to find somebody to run some of those other machines and the fact that at times, you're able to skip a process that might be not necessarily time consuming, overall time consuming, yes. but maybe a, a little bit of a pain, right? And skip those because of the quality that Heimbook brought to your process. Yep. That to me is significant in yep. itself. Absolutely. Any, any chance that we can remove an operation and, and take another pair of hands out of the equation, it's always better for business. 
it makes things a lot easier uh, and, and it's a lot better for quality. And speaking of quality, gears demand it. You work in some unique fields, actually. We some do. ag, some, some food, right? Yep. Uh, some oil and gas. So it demands it there. Have you seen maybe less secondary operations? And we've already talked about one already, but maybe less uh, finishing work than easy or less stress in measurements and, and CMM work on that side because you trust the system more? Um, so, you know, when we first got it, we were a little, little hesitant and we did a lot more quality checks. Um, you know, maybe we were checking every five pieces, but every single time we checked it, it was spot on. It wasn't moving. We had no issues, no run out. Um, you know, everything was always there. And so it allowed us to back off on the quality checks. And we actually managed to get this to run lights out in, as a hobbing machine. We ran it lights out. We came in the morning, we turned the lights on and it's still making gears. We charted it and it's still just where we left it. So, and you guys, my friend are thriving with work right now. That's why you're hiring. That's why I've <laughs> talked about it three times now. Yeah. Uh, but this machine eats work. Oh you yeah. You have the ability to run this 24 yes. seven if necessary and bring, you bring extra jobs in here if needed. We to do. try and eat through those as well. We're, we're, we're actually currently trying to find more jobs that we can just put in here because it, it's just, it's so much faster, so much easier. Um, and it just takes a lot of load off of the other guys. The more skilled guys can go worry about the onesie twosie parts. And, and if it's, you know, 50 pieces or more, put it in here, set it and forget it. When we talk about high mix, low volume type, we're standing in front of a robot. There's yes. a lot of folks out there that think I need thousands of parts in order to run automation, but you did kind of just say if it's a onesie twosie, we typically do it elsewhere, but 50 or above, we're going to run it here. How does that all work when we think of the ability? Because you're a true job shop and you're working we in are. different industries. Yep. You have people coming to your back door saying, can you work on this for me, right? Yep. So that ability, automation in a high mix, low volume environment still working for you, right? Correct. Yes. I mean, it, it, with, with the change over times, I mean, you're already setting up a machine, right? So whether it's 50 pieces, 75, whatever, you're already setting up the machine. So you set this up the same way. When it comes to the robot side of it, all you have to do is, is essentially change the jaws and input the conversational side on the, on the robot and you're up and running. It does all the things for you. It does the measuring for you. It, it, it's as simplistic as it can be. The last thing I want to ask you, maybe I do, whenever I hear you say something, I'm like, <laughs> I want to know more about that. But I think the last thing I'm going to ask you is you've invested in several of the components from Heimbook, right? Correct. And maybe my Heimbook friends out there aren't going to love what I'm about to say because <laughs> It saves you money and maybe they want to sell a little bit more, but you have three, four, five different components that you utilize to switch out based on all your different SKUs, but you're actually using some of those on your other machines as well due to Highbook's flexibility. Yes. So once we realized how much time was saved between loading and unloading parts on a conventional hobby machine, um, you know, with an arbor and, and a nut and locking it down, a lot of operator involvement. Um, the Heinbook system allows us to essentially just drop it in, hit start and go. And so what we did was we created adapter plates for all of the existing mandrels we have here to put in our, our older machines um, so that we can utilize them anywhere we need to, anywhere we can save time or money. That's what we're going to do. That's uh, uh, this story is one of the more impressive ones for me, Dalton. It really I mean, we're going to hit the, the buzzwords again, but you're, you're hitting all of them, the flexibility, the rigidity. Uh, you're, you're getting the return that you need. You're getting the finishes or the reduction of secondary operations, everything that we say we can do when we're out there trying to sell something, right? It's yep. something that you have confirmed to say, we are doing it. I, I didn't believe it at first um, until, you know, we, we actually got to try it and see it firsthand. And, you know, the, the, the results are undisputable. Yeah. Um, so we've had zero issues. And like I said, we're actually investing even more money into the Heinbuch technology. Um, we're looking at other ways that we can use them through the shop. Because, I mean, you know, one of the biggest things, too, is a lot of people talk about the startup costs, right? It's, it's expensive, it's this and it's that, it, it, you know, it, it's really not. It's not that bad. And you know, the stuff we're using is an off the shelf item. It is a stock standard item that we don't have to worry about. So if something does break, something does happen, we haven't had any issues in a couple years now, it's there. And, and you know, the, the, it's, it's, it's honestly a lifesaver for here. 
<laughs> Dalton, I think that's a perfect way to close this out. You use the word undisputed, and I think that's a fantastic way to describe this because you, as an interviewee, are also the undisputed champion. <laughs> so thank you for that. Thank you for your time. Thank you all for watching as well. This is Heimbook. This is Precision Gears. If you're looking for someone, a partner out there that can help you make gears, 1919. This is a success story for over 100 years now. Dalton is the man. He may have come from security where he was also the undisputed champion, <laughs> but now he's been doing this quite a while and he has a team to back him up. These guys are absolutely brilliant. And for the fourth time, they're hiring. So reach out anytime, Dalton, my friend. Hey, thanks, Dalton. Thank you so I much, brother. It.